What's up, wall fans? Common Sensors Social Media World. So, here we go. Uh, for those of you that have been on live feeds lately, I, uh, I still haven't gotten a webcam. I'm working on that. I'm going to get into why I don't have a webcam just yet. And in fact, what we're doing here, there we go. Okay, so what I'm doing, I'm trying out some new things. I'm going to get into why uh, the webcam <laughs> isn't set up yet. Um, but in order to actually interact with the chat, which is something I haven't been able to do uh, with this setup, and in fact, I know I'm getting long here on the opening. Uh, I know I haven't been able to do that on this setup, but I'm, I'm hoping that I'll be able to do it with how I've got it set up right now. We will have a webcam soon. It's crazy trying to get a webcam right now. I'm going to talk about that during the actual episode. Um, but hopefully I will be able to interact with all of you uh, via looking at it this way. And we'll see. Now I'm adjusting because that's the thing with Facebook. It's kind of crazy how the framing is. All right, thanks for bearing with me, everyone. Welcome to the live feed for uh, Common Sense Sundays, episode nine. With me, your favorite podcast host, the one and only Sean O'Rourke, uh, and of course, Con uh, go tell it to the wall. I'm a little bit all over the place. This is the first episode of July. We took last weekend off for the 4th of July. Not that I had anything exciting to do, uh, and but today's very exciting. I've got some new headphones. We're going to talk about that stuff, uh, and I'm probably going to go over because I haven't recorded for a week, and that tends to happen a lot. So, let's get into it. Common Sensors Podcast Consumers. Welcome to episode 9 of Common Sense Sundays with Go Tell to the Wall and of course me, your favorite podcast host, the one and only Sean O'Rourke. I'm going to warn everyone, I'm working on some new stuff uh, setup wise for the studio right now. Uh, it's not going to affect those of you listening necessarily, uh, but it's, it's something I'm dealing with currently as, as we are right now. <laughs> uh, mainly dealing with the live feed. I'm going to talk about that for even for those of you that don't watch on the live feed, but it's 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 really kind of a funny story with what's going on uh, with with the live feed setup and everything else right now. Uh, but before we get into that, we always kick things off with our social plugs. You can keep up with us during episodes, after episodes, before episodes, whenever you so please, and you can do that in multiple places. One of those would be Facebook. We are currently live on Facebook. Head over to Facebook.com/slash Go Tell It to the Wall. Uh, like our page, check back off, and that's going to keep you updated on all kinds of new episodes, new content, everything new that comes out. Uh, and of course, we are uh, on YouTube. Head over to YouTube, search Go Tell It to the Wall, subscribe to our channel. That's where you're going to find uh, videos. All the live feeds get posted up there really like a day or two after the actual uh, recording of it. Uh, you're also going to find our parenting playlist, our mental health playlist, mental health Mondays, beer reviews, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, so make sure you are subscribed to our YouTube channel. Uh, that that that's kind of your 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 video stop for for everything that is go tell us the wall on common sense Sundays. Additionally, uh, make sure you bookmark SeanO'RourkeLive.com. That's right, SeanO'RourkeLive.com. Uh, if you can't remember how to find the YouTube or the Facebook, neither of them should be difficult. But just in case, there's actually links right there. So if you remember nothing else, remember SeanO'RourkeLive.com. Uh, where you're going to find links to all those things, like I said, as well as our blog post photos you won't find anywhere else. And, of course, our Patreon campaign. Uh, you will find that linked right there if you have the means to do so and see fit to do so. Please help us out financially. Every dollar helps to keep this studio running, especially having to do multiple upgrades lately. Uh, <laughs> like it's, it's like one thing after another, which we'll talk about as we get into this episode. Uh, and, of course, if you didn't notice this past week, some new Something's Not Right Studios content uh, came out. I mean, they have new content all the time. You should be subscribed to their channel as well uh, on YouTube, but you're going to find Go Tell to the Wall content up there, and we just had a new 
uh, punk rock suggestions of the week that dropped this past week. So make sure you're 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 in on that as well. Very 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 important. All right. Uh, so as I mentioned, I I've been dealing with new gear stuff this week and everything else, and and really over the past couple weeks because we didn't record last week. Finally got some new headphones. Uh, finally, it, it, I've been overdue, and it's funny because it's it, it, this. It's somewhat meaningless to a lot of you out there that, that aren't either audiophiles or sound engineers or have worked around sound a lot, but headphones are just, they're one of the most important things that you can you can have, really, uh, and, and there's a certain comfort in, in a great pair of headphones. Like me, personally, at home, I have my studio headphones, but I also have a pair of uh, Bluetooth, which can also be wired, some nice Sennheisers that I use just listening to music around the house. Uh, and then of course I've got you know multiple pairs of earbuds, Bluetooth earbuds and stuff, because those come in handy when you're when you're moving around a lot. Uh, but there is a comfort in a, in a really high quality pair of studio headphones. Probably going to do an individual review uh, of these headphones, but I, I would recommend them to anyone out there that's looking for a great set of headphones, specifically you know nice studio headphones. Uh, these are the Pioneer DJ uh, HDJ X7s. Uh, they they're one of the top of the line. Uh, sets of headphones they can get from Pioneer. There's actually just one set that's that's a little higher end and it's just about double the price. So my wife was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I was like, she's like, do you, do you need? Well, they're a little bit. Nope, nope. You're not getting the. Okay, I can't spend four hundred dollars on headphones. I'm gonna spend two hundred. Uh, but Pi the Pioneer HDJ X7s, uh, very high frequency response, uh, very comfortable. They they put a lot into the design with the new X series. Uh, I actually up. I don't even want to say upgraded, but I was on the HDJ 2000s for about six years there, uh, which was their, their previous top of the line when they, they switched to this X line. Uh, and it's, so far, I haven't used them a ton because I, this is my first time in the studio recording. I've used them a little bit in the meantime. Uh, so far, fantastic headphones. And, and even, it, it's funny noticing that little bit of difference over six years. And these headphones haven't even been fully broken in just yet so that it, they're going to just get to sounding better. Um, and I do get a lot of questions. I, mean, I just want to take a moment uh, before we get into digital trends. I do get a lot of questions. People are like, and, and I not even just to me specifically. Sometimes I get them to me specifically because I'm not an audio expert. Uh, but I see people asking quite a bit the question online, like, you know, hey, uh, uh, oh my, you know, what kind of headphones should I get? And they're looking for recommendations and everything else. And what I say uh, to to most people is it's it's all about frequency response. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't care about that, but for me. As someone who sits in a studio uh, with my headphones, the frequency response is, is by far the most important thing with headphones. So if, if you don't know a lot, that's one of the first things you're going to look at. Now, of course, headphones vary for, for every individual. Uh, the, the low, the high-end frequency response is something that's very important to a lot of people, depending on you know what you're doing. Uh, but a lot of people, and this is a popular thing these days, uh, a lot of people like their, their headphones tuned low. So you get a lot, like a ton of bass out of them. And, and that's that's where like the Beats headphones come in. People love Beats headphones. And I, I, I think I was talking bad about Beats headphones like from episode one of Go Tell to the Wall. Uh, simply because they are overrated. They don't have the frequency response. If you talk to any sound, no sound engineer is, is using Beats. However, that being said, if you really want some Beats and you want, you know, heavy, heavy bass, whatever, or it's a cool status symbol, get some Beats. That, like, that's fine. I, I'm not going to give you a hard time about it necessarily. Uh, but just just know the differences in headphones. <laughs> That's really what it is. And that became the trend where everything got tuned super low. Even Sony was doing that with a lot of their studio headphones. Um, and, and over my life, I actually was a Sony headphone user for a long time uh, and shifted away from it because they, they were tuning them too, just too low for me for what I was looking for. Uh, so, so that pushed me toward the Pioneers. And, and now I'm on my second pair of Pioneers here uh, in after using the last ones for six years. Six years is a long time on a set of headphones. Uh, really four years of heavy, heavy, heavy use. Uh, but, I, but I had them for six years and they were getting six years of use and they and they definitely, definitely did their job. Uh, but after a while, stuff starts to break down and uh, and the build on the new X-Series for Pioneer uh, feels sturdier uh, than the previous HDJ series. They had the, the 1500s and the 2000s. Uh, so, so can't recommend them enough if you're looking for a good set of set, studio headphones. Uh, but regardless, I would say just just do a little bit of research, S figure out what it is you want out of a set of headphones, uh, do some research, and and then 
go based on your own personal needs and, and kind of wants and everything. So as much as I love these headphones, I, I wouldn't just blanket recommend them to everybody. Uh, I would recommend them to, to people that kind of know headphones and know they're looking for a high frequency response and comfort. That's actually why I, I still wear DJ headphones. I, I cut my teeth as a mobile DJ, so I have a certain comfort with, with DJ headphones uh, that have the high frequency response of, of most studio monitors. Uh, so that, that's my personal preference. So it just it really depends where you know how you want to go with it, where what you're looking for, and and what you're going to use them for. So. All right, moving along, I, do, I want to talk one more thing before we get into digital trends. I have told everyone on the live feed, and I know I've mentioned it on the actual podcast episodes, uh, we, I'm looking for a new live feed setup, and I, I have it pretty much figured out. We're, we're moving to a webcam setup as opposed to this, this mobile setup that I've, that I've gotten that I've used for years now, uh, but it, it's just gotten to be too ridiculous. So I'm, I'm looking to get a webcam, and I've actually, I did my research, got it picked out, we're all set. Uh, the funny thing is, right now, because of the pandemic and everyone working from home, uh, it is almost impossible to find webcams. In fact, if you go on, like you can go on Best Buy right now, best, bestbuy.com, because uh, I've been checking every few days and I just checked this morning. Uh, pretty much every webcam is, is sold out. You can't even order it. And then if you go over to Amazon, uh, you can find places to order some webcams, but what's happening is they're double the price of what they should be because people on Amazon are actually price gouging for webcams because everybody's looking for a webcam right now. Uh, and that's what's funny because for me, you know, I'm always like, do I really need this for the studio? And I was talking to my wife about it. I was like, you know, this, it would be better for the live feeds uh, to, to have an actual webcam, you know. Uh, but what happened But what happened there was my wife, and I was like, do I really need it, though, blah, blah, blah. And, and, uh, and sure enough, you know, my wife's like, no, well, you, I can use it, too, because she's forced to work from home right now. So, of course, that's, that's, where, uh, that's where we're at. Are we frozen on the live feed? Whoever's on the live feed, is, is that frozen? Like I said, I'm working on this new setup, and I'm frozen on my end, so I don't even know if I'm getting comments and stuff. It's looking fine here, but it's frozen. I don't know. Facebook. This is why we're doing a webcam, doing a whole new setup for the live feeds, because people enjoy the live feeds. Uh, and I didn't mention at the top of the episode, but for those of you watching the live feed, if, if you want the best audio experience from the podcast, make sure you're subscribed, download the actual episodes. Uh, the, the live feeds are fun because we can interact and, and it is additional exposure, uh, but you're going to get the best audio experience from the actual podcast itself. All right, moving along to digital trends. Oh, man, digital trends have been pretty ridiculous this week, uh, and, and I guess they've just been ridiculous in general, uh, but of course, I think this is pick. yeah, it's catching up here, uh, but of course... It's gotten even more ridiculous over the past week, and, and not even everything pertaining to COVID and the pandemic and, and wearing masks and stuff, which is what we've really been dealing with uh, for the past couple of months, uh, but I think people are just getting bored. <laughs> it, 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 I mean, people have been getting bored for a couple months now, but now it's just, it's even worse. Uh, so one of the hashtags floating around the social platforms right now is hashtag Wayfair children child trafficking. Yes, you heard that right. Hashtag Wayfair Child Trafficking. We're not, I'm not talking Wayfair sunglasses, which were popular sunglasses in the 70s and 80s and now have come back over the past few years. No, Wayfair. If you're not familiar with Wayfair, it's a, a retail website. I don't know exactly what the difference, you know, I, 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 I see commercials for it and I think they just sell a little bit of everything. You know, it, it's a retail site. Uh, but what happened was somebody got confused over an overpriced item on their website and somehow that snowballed into Wayfair uh, is, is involved in child trafficking. And here's the thing. This hashtag is trending on Twitter right now. It is trending on Twitter right this very second. People are sharing it. Now, of course, some people are sharing it realizing that this is absolutely ridiculous and they're, and they're making jokes about it. Uh, but I scrolled through this morning and realized some people actually think Wayfair is involved in child trafficking. Wayfair. The retail website uh, and like I said this has blown up there's a hashtag for it and of course Snopes picked it up anyone that is, is thinking clearly does a little research and says oh no Wayfair is not doing any kind of child trafficking this is just some confusion by someone that didn't understand why a particular piece of furniture uh, cost a certain amount which I also don't get in this day and age like we have talked on this podcast for years about the dumb shit that uh, who was doing it? I'm trying to think. I know, like, I feel like Tiffany did something. The the jewelry company. 
Uh, but somebody, one of the higher end, I know Gucci was doing like weird sneakers and overpriced stuff. Shouldn't be a surprise in this day and age. I, 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 I don't understand. You know, we have people out there spending three hundred dollars on a on a webcam that they just need to use for Zoom, and and you're shocked that there's expensive furniture. I don't get it. But the important thing to to keep in mind here is before you go running with something and sharing things, always, always, always fact check. This Wayfair thing was a simple fact check situation that took two seconds to do, and uh, and you know that Wayfair is not actually trafficking children. Simple, pretty simple. Just do, do a quick Google search. Quick Google search. All right, also trending on digital platforms right now uh, is Disney World, because of course Disney World decided to open this weekend, uh, despite the fact that Florida is seeing a huge uptick in uh, COVID cases throughout the state. And in fact, Florida today, today reported 15,000 new cases. You heard that right, not 1,500, 15,000 new cases in Florida, but by all means, Let's open up Disney World because that's important right now. Uh, and, and it's just, it's amazing to me that we're still doing this. And I'm still hearing people say, well, it's because there's more testing. And if you're one of those people that sits there and says it's because there's more testing, uh, go look at the percentage numbers. The percentage out of testing that are testing positive is, is, is higher than it has been. So it, this, it, this isn't a, well, more people, some more stuff. No, but the per you just look at the percentage. It's pretty simple. Uh, I will not be going to Disney World anytime soon. I don't, I don't understand why people are doing this. Like, you, you're really hankering to go stand in long lines and spend a thousand dollars to buy your child an ice cream cone? I, I don't get. I like Disneyland as much as the next person. I, used to, I I'm not used to paying for Disneyland because I spent years not not paying to go there, uh, having worked for Disney for eight years. But I enjoy Disneyland as much as the next guy. I've got a three year old. My, I, I love taking her to Disneyland, but I'm not in a rush to do that right now. Jeez. And then, of course, piggybacking off of that, a, a hashtag that is trending right now is DeSantis failed Florida. That's right, DeSantis, DeSantis, I, DeSantis, I can never, I don't know how he pronounces it exactly. And honestly, I don't care because the guy is dumb as a stump. Uh, and, and this is spawned from the 15,000 new cases today. Uh, he is the governor of Florida and has done minimal things to help control the spread in Florida. Uh, whereas you see other states and their governors have done much, much, much more uh, to actually keep keep the numbers down as at least as much as possible and we've done that here in California even though you're seeing lots of increases in numbers in California uh, it's it it's much better than than Florida has been as far as the response and, and everything else uh, which and we're gonna talk about that a little more in some COVID updates but let, let's have some fun with the digital trends right now hashtag uh, rejected beauty salon names that's right hashtag rejected beauty salon names and uh, this one was just a fun one uh, that I that, that that I found and, and thought people might enjoy, uh, and I wanted to share a couple with you that uh, uh, that I found I enjoyable. Uh, one of them was hashtag rejected beauty salon names comb on over like a comb comb over comb on over. I kind of enjoyed that one. I I would probably go to a beauty salon that that had that name. Uh, the other one I enjoyed uh, was simply hashtag rejected beauty salon names blowjobs. That's right, a little bit of a double entendre there, uh, you know, because of blow dryers. And the funny thing is, I, s I actually saw this one as I was scrolling through, and I went, I guarantee, guarantee there's a beauty salon, or at least one of those, like, blow dry bars that is called blowjobs. I, there ha it has to. It has to exist. I guarantee. I didn't feel like Googling to see if it exists, but I guarantee that one exists, just for the play on words, and, and, and especially depending where you are. Like, if you're in Vegas or something, absolutely makes sense. <laughs> uh, I could see this if... if if electricity was more rampant at Burning Man, uh, somebody setting up a, a, a blowjobs like themed camp that's just a bunch of blow dryers and giving blowouts to people. Uh, now, of course, at Burning Man, you also have things like orgy tents, so this could lead to a lot of confusion. However, I, I could see that you know happening at Burning Man. It, it's something that could certainly uh, certainly happen. <laughs> All right, the last one I want to share with everyone is uh, hashtag Nobody Artists Club. This is something that artists are actually sharing on social platforms. And I, when I first saw this, I was like, well, that's cool. Are, are we just looking at artists supporting artists? And, and this is. So I don't mean to beat this down as much as, 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 as harshly as this is going to sound. Uh, but what it is is it's artists using this on social platforms, uh, specifically artists that are under 10,000 followers. Or apparently 10,000 followers is kind of this place you get stuck on uh, when it comes to social platforms. I don't know. because Especially Twitter. I, I, I rarely use the Twitter. 
I use it for news. Like I, I'm not out there contributing to Twitter and, and, and interacting with people very much at all. Um, but I guess you get stuck at 10,000 followers. And this is a thing to, to help artists get more followers, which I think is great because follow artists. I, I've always said on Patreon you can you can support artists financially. You can you know support Go Tell It to the Wall, support Common Sense Sundays and, and myself. Uh, but this is – it's kind of twisted the way – they're looking at things because it's not so much giving exposure for artists directly. It's more focused on their followers, like these actual people that follow them. And the reason this is going to sound a little harsh is because it got me thinking, and I've said this so many times on this podcast, and I, you know, I tell this to people, don't value yourself by the amount of followers you have on social platforms. Don't. In fact, you can be a fantastic artist, only have a few followers. Uh, but you you could be making a bigger difference than having you know twenty thousand, thirty thousand followers who are just scrolling through because they follow thousands of people and they're barely even seeing your stuff. So it's great have these followers, get this exposure. Like, don't get me wrong, I understand that side of it, uh, but don't don't get your value from the amount of people that simply follow you. And we've talked about that before on the podcast. Tons of followers doesn't translate to to talent. Or, or the ability to move any kind of meter, whether it be retail, uh, influential meter, whatever it might be, that doesn't guarantee it. We've seen lots of influencers uh, over the years that they have a million followers. I've talked about them on this podcast, uh, but then couldn't sell 20 t-shirts to their followers. And it's like, yeah, because that's the thing is people just, it's free. And I, I say this to people, I'm like, make sure you subscribe. Even if you're not going to listen, just subscribe, help the numbers. So yes, there is something to be said for those numbers, but there's also something to be said in not taking your own personal value out of that. There's so much more to everyone out there than just follower numbers. And, and we need to start realizing that more as a society. Because that's how we'll move forward just, just as humans. As human beings. Alright, some COVID updates. I know I talked a little bit about it in the social stuff there. I think I got some weird settings on my mic right now. That's the other great thing for anyone that likes to watch the live feeds. Once we get a new setup, you're actually going to get a, a much better sound uh, as opposed to what you get on the uh, the video right now. So th that's it, all that's going to improve as soon as as soon as they stop price gouging and and for webcams and they become a little more readily available. Uh, so COVID, it just it's it's really getting worse. I mentioned the 15,000 new cases in Florida. Uh, we are also we're seeing increases just about everywhere. I mean, Texas is a mess. Arizona is a mess. Cal California is not doing well at all. Um, it, it, it's it's crazy everywhere. And, uh, and and the other thing was last weekend was Fourth of July. And I'll tell you around my neighborhood, I was at home with with my with my wife and kid. Uh, my neighborhood was going off. There was parties everywhere. Uh, there was, I mean, fireworks were just, it was nuts this year. I feel like 4th of July, it just gets bad every year. And it's so funny because people are like, ah, that's crazy. It's, the fireworks aren't that bad. And then what happens is on July 5th, everyone shares the, the time lapse of all the fireworks around Los, Los Angeles. And everyone goes, oh my God, that's crazy. It's like, yeah, I live right in the middle of that. I mean, I, I spend my 4th of July like later in the evenings because I, fortunately I get to spend the daytime with my kid. Uh, I had her out in the pool last Saturday. Uh, but I spend the evening sitting in my yard with, with a hose readily available. And and people are going to be like, oh, that's so, you're crazy. That's an overreaction. No, you can sit in my yard uh, on the 4th of July and you can you can actually hear stuff hitting off the the, uh, the roof of my deck and the roof of, of my, my back driveway here. You can actually hear it hitting off of there. Uh, so th it's not me overreacting. It's me being safe and, and keeping my home safe and my family safe. That, that That's what it is. That's absolutely what it is. Oh, man. Uh, but people are going crazy for the fourth. Uh, and all I have to say is humanity is truly just terrible. Truly just terrible. We are we are the worst country in the world right now when it comes to COVID. I, like, by far. We're literally not allowed to leave our country right now. You're not allowed to go to other countries. Mexico doesn't even want us coming in there. I mean, that, that's the point we're at in the United States of America. And I just, it's, I, I, I don't understand. I don't understand what people don't understand about this. You know, you're, you're in such a hurry to go out and drink at bars. What is the big deal about drinking at bars? I guess overpriced drinks and stuff like it, it blows my mind. It truly blows my mind. But it is how it is, you know, and, and people only care about themselves. They only care about getting their hair cut and getting their nails done and, and going out and paying a bunch of money for, for overpriced food and drinks. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. And we still have pushback on the masks for some reason. 
I've been talking about this for weeks. I don't understand the pushback on the masks. Wear the goddamn mask. It's not that hard. In fact, I'm wearing my Descendants uh, special edition t-shirt that they made at the beginning of this whole pandemic where, where Milo's even wearing a mask. I mean, for God's sake, Milo. Milo's wearing a mask. If Milo can wear a mask, we can all wear a mask. And in fact, the Orange Menace actually wore a mask like yesterday or whatever it was. And here's the amazing hypocrisy from people. And this is why I'll never be affiliated with a specific political party. Uh, and, and this is clearly worse on one side. But here's the hypocrisy of people. This was uncovered through Twitter, uh, and, and I'm sure other social platforms, where they found people who had tweeted out they will never wear a mask. Masks are crazy. And then they found these same people that were saying masks are crazy. They saw the Orange Menace wearing a mask and then decided that it's okay to wear a mask now. Sheep. Fucking sheep. All these people. Fucking sheep. Just because this orange son of a bitch tell like, and, oh, he's wearing one now, it's okay to... Give me a break. It's absolutely astounding. Just give me a... I, I can't with it anymore. Give me a break. Wear a goddamn mask. Hypocrisy. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, I'm just planning on being at home until 2021. I, it's, it's not getting any better here, and, and everyone else around this country is, is not helping it. I, so I'm just planning on staying at home. I, I'm going to be at home. Luckily, I have a decent-sized yard and, and, and a pool. I haven't, I've left the house once. I've gone on a couple walks around the block, like two or three times uh, since March 14th. I have been at the house since March 14th. Uh, and in fact, the only time I've left the house uh, was, was with my wife and daughter to do a drive-by of some friends of ours that live nearby. They were literally moving to Arkansas, uh, so we didn't even get out of the car. We drove by their house and waved goodbye and then went home That's it, for like five months. It's not that hard. Let's let's do better as a country. Absolutely. All right, parenting. Oh man. So parenting parenting is getting a little better in my house. Uh, the last time we were on an episode of Common Sense Sundays, I was getting zero sleep. Uh, pretty much zero sleep because because my my three year old was was pushing back on on absolutely everything, uh, everything that she could, and uh, and. Sure enough, that has gotten a little better, and she's actually gotten a little more used to the fireworks, which is, which is fantastic. She's not fully over them, but she's getting a little more uh, used to the fireworks, which is great, uh, because they, that's the thing. As Fourth of July is over, there's still fireworks in my neighborhood. I live in an area of Los Angeles where there's just a constant barrage of fireworks. Uh, it does get a little better gradually after the Fourth. It ramps up to the Fourth and gets a little better gradually, uh, but fortunately, she's getting a little more used to it. I don't really not excited about her being used to fireworks, but. It, it's at least getting my entire house a little more sleep than we were before. Uh, this one had me uh, very amused this morning. Uh, was hang on, I'm going to save some of this for the next episode. Let me make a couple notes here. Okay. Uh, so this morning, it's been a lot of Trolls World tour in my house. If you have kids of a certain age, you're, you probably are familiar with at least the soundtrack. My kid hasn't even seen the movie yet, uh, but she absolutely loves loves the soundtrack. We listen to it quite a bit. And this morning, uh, we're sitting eating breakfast, and I got Trolls World Tour soundtrack on the on in the background. I think I even stood up to get some more coffee or something, and, and I hear my, my my daughter, my three year old, is asking my wife because uh, if you're not familiar with the soundtrack, it, it's the Trolls. It's a lot of mashups, and it's the Trolls singing um, like well known songs, a lot of them pop songs. One of those well known so known songs is Crazy Train by Black Sabbath, sung by Ozzy Osbourne, and uh, m my my daughter, my three year old, who knows the characters. There's a character named Queen Barb who actually sings the song in the in the movie and on the soundtrack. Uh, I can't can't tell you the specific actress's name offhand, uh, but sings it and and she's she's asking my wife, uh, why is why is Queen Barb on a crazy train? <laughs> Breakfast conversations in the O'Rourke household and she was very confused. She was like, well why why is she riding a crazy train? And genuinely asking my wife this and my wife's like, well because it's it's a song and they sing about a crazy train and then it, I had to kind of. I had to describe, like, not not in depth, but I had to explain, like, no, this is a song. Uh, it's an older song. It's, you know, from the 70s, and, and it's sung by Ozzy Osbourne. And so my, my daughter is learning, you know, about Ozzy Osbourne and everything else. And it's funny, if you're not familiar with Trolls World Tour, World Tour uh, Ozzy Osbourne actually has, has a part in it. I don't know how big the part is, um, but he definitely, he voices, uh, he has his voice in, in the film. It's an animated film, uh, obviously. But th these are conversations that happen when you have a, a toddler at home. Uh, and it's definitely something to be confused about uh, because why would someone be 
uh, riding a crazy train. And then, of course, I, I go immediately to off the rails because uh, one of the go tell of the wall mottos is uh, we don't need rails. You know, and if you're not familiar with that, go back and listen to some episodes when, when that one finally came out. Uh, it became an official go tell of the wall uh, slogan, motto, term, whatever. Uh, that was the other fun with, with this morning. Is I have, we have a bookshelf uh, right underneath uh, my, our record player in our living room in, in, in my house. And uh, we had books that, the same shelf we had before we had a kid. Uh, and we had books on there, you know, that are just, there's some funny books and, and whatever books. Uh, but then once my daughter got old enough to, like, pull books off the shelf, what we did was we pushed all those books back and we put a row of books in front that are all her books. Well, today she pulled her books out and then found... Uh, books behind those books, which, and, and we're not talking crazy, like anything weird back there, but I will say there is a, a vintage pinup book, uh, which I honestly, I don't even mind my kid reading it. Like it's, it's, it's very body positive. It's vintage pinup, uh, you know, uh, photos. Uh, and, th and there's also like a why I March book that I, it's about the women's March that I bought for both my wife and daughter a few years ago, uh, not long after the women's March. Uh, but the one that she, and she was pulling those out, but the one she pulled out, uh, was and I'm gonna get the exact title wrong. Uh, was the se uh, sexy book of sexy sex? And this is and, and now I'm 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 feeling terrible because I literally like I was thinking this earlier and I was like ah oh, I got her name in my head. Um, she is one of the voices on Bob's Burgers. She was the the uh, the the nemesis page to Kenneth on Thirty Rock. And I'm just I'm totally blanking on her name. And of course I don't have Chris or Bridget on to to feed me this information right now. Uh, but it's it's a comedic book. Uh, that, that she had done a few years ago uh, called The Sexy Book of Sexy Sex or something like that. And it, it's all comedy, but it's funny because my, my kid pulls it out and she's like, what's this book called? And my wife goes, oh, it's the book of book of and something, you know, without saying, because, and it's not to say sexy is a bad word, but I don't need my three-year-old running around going, sexy, sex, sexy, <laughs> would be a little ridiculous. Uh, so, and, and my kid called her out on it. She said, no, that's not all the words. She knew she wasn't reading all the words. So I just went in and did some distraction. I was like, all right, okay, let's let's talk about something else here. Oh, oh, the joy of having a three-year-old at home. It's fantastic. Oh, man. All right, let's talk a little bit about mental health. We're going to record a new Mental Health Monday uh, right after this. But this, this came up recently with myself, but also with some friends that I've been talking to about kind of how they're dealing with uh, with the quarantine and with COVID and everything else, and, and especially from a mental health, mental illness standpoint. Uh, and, and one of the things I'm realizing just from myself and from others is that it's, it's, it's really, start, I mean, it's always been, it's been rough. It's been a rough time for everybody. Uh, but it's I think it's starting to really take its toll uh, on those of us that weren't as affected mentally as others. And specifically what I'm talking about is introverts. People who are introverted uh, and, and don't mind just being at home a lot of the time. But this has gone on so long that I think even introverts uh, are starting to feel this. You know, they even someone who's really introverted it, it needs to get out, needs to socialize a little. And I get that. Uh, and, and I bring that up because I think it can be confusing for some people that are now suddenly they're like, but I've been doing this for four or five months. Why am I? And I think we're hitting breaking points for some people uh, that are actually introverts. And it's funny because you might be like, well, what do you mean you're feeling that personally, Sean? Here's the thing with me. I am loud. I come in a studio and I yell at a wall. Uh, most of my friends that know me know that I, I, I pretty much don't shut up when I'm around my friends and stuff. Uh, but the thing about that is at, at, my, at my core, like inside, I'm actually an introvert. I would call myself uh, in, a, uh, a introverted ex an extroverted introvert is what I would say. There's, you know, you can go both ways, but I would call myself an, an extroverted intro, introvert. Uh, meaning, I actually, I can do these things. I, you know, I, I do enjoy getting out, but at, at, at my core, I, I enjoy just being at home. I enjoy just being at home. And that's why this is really starting to affect me. Uh, and even my wife says it. She's like, oh yeah, I know, Sean's fine. He, he, he likes being at home, and I do. Uh, but he, he, it's starting to affect me. And I know it's begun to affect either, not necessarily begun to affect, it's been affecting me since the beginning, uh, but it's affecting more uh, people that are a little more introverted and, and they've been doing a little better than, than those that need, have that need to socialize constantly and be around others uh, and, and it, it's starting to hit. And that's why I bring this up in, in mental health is if you're one of those people, recognize that. 
you know, look, look at yourself and see if maybe that's why it is suddenly affecting you a little more uh, than it has been for the past three, four, five months. Because that, that could be some of the reasoning behind it. Absolutely. Uh, and and that's, that's where we got to lean on friends again. Reach out to your introverted friends that, that may have mental health problems, mental illness. Uh, make sure you're reaching out to them. And if you're somebody who suddenly is having a much tougher time with everything, uh, remember you can lean on your friends. You have friends out there. You have family out there uh, that, are, that are willing to talk to you. And, and, and mental health and ending the stigma and, and being honest and, and open about this, uh, these things has been of the utmost importance since before we finally started talking about it and, and not looking at people as, as weaker because they had a mental illness. But right now, especially, we got to lean on each other. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Sometimes it's just a matter of talking to somebody. In fact, I talked to a friend the other day and I was like, I was like, you know what? I'm so glad you said that because I've been having the, those same feelings. And it didn't make the feelings go away at all. But it, it made me realize, you know what, it, it's okay to have these feelings, and it's something we're all getting through together. Because to quote the most successful Disney Channel original movie of all time, we're all in this together. All right, let's move on to some entertainment. Absolutely. Man, I'm still a little tired, that's the thing. I, like, I'm still recovering from all this stuff, and that's why we're going a little long. We're already over time for episode 9 of Common Sense Sundays. But I want to get through a couple of these entertainment things. Uh, the Streets, Mike Skinner, a.k.a. The Streets, just dropped a new album this past Friday. That's right. First album from The Streets in 10 years. It's funny. I saw that and I was like, has it really been 10 years? Because uh, I listen to a lot of The Streets. I, I own all the albums. I, I'm a big Mike Skinner fan. Uh, which is funny because I am not an electronic music connoisseur. Uh, but it was literally from the first day I heard The Streets which was 15 years ago, 16, like 15, not quite 20, but 15 plus years ago, uh, a friend of mine had, was playing in his car and I w went out immediately and bought the two albums that, that were out at that point. Uh, so I'm a big Streets fan. I know it's weird because I'm not, not much of an electronic music fan, but love Mike Skinner in the Streets. Uh, I will say the, the new album, none of, us, none of Us Are Getting Out of This Life Alive, uh, of course, great album title. Uh, it, it, it's of course not his best album, uh, nothing is ever going to live up to uh, OPM, Original Pirate Material, for the, those of you familiar with The Streets. Uh, but it is still a fantastic album. Some great tracks on there. And, uh, and of course, my favorite so far is uh, Take Me As I Am. It's a, it's a fantastic track. And I will say there's a lot more collaboration on this album uh, than there had been on the previous what, five, six albums. I can't even keep track of how many there are. If I sat here and counted them off, I could, could but we're not going to waste time doing that. Uh, there's definitely more... Uh, collaborations with with other artists on this album so that is fun and exciting uh, and and definitely recommend if you're a streets fan fan of Mike Skinner picking up the new album uh, none of us are getting out of this life alive I, I, I've got a couple more listens to give on it all right Muppets Hamilton this this came out like a week ago I think last like last weekend when Hamilton came out on Disney Plus yes I watched the damn thing with my wife, and it was funny, last weekend, last Sunday, my, my wife says to my daughter, oh, do you want to watch a new thing, new special thing, Hamilton? And I was like, yeah, we can watch Hamilton, and then so I went to look up something, and I went, honey, do, do you realize that Hamilton is almost three hours long? Like, <laughs> it's almost three hours long. And sure enough, the runtime for the Disney Plus thing is like two hours, 40 minutes, or whatever, because the runtime for the, uh, for the, the Broadway uh, musical is, is two hours, 50 minutes, but that's including the uh, intermission. I was <laughs> like, all right, no, no. So, so we ended up watching Singing in, the, Singing in the Rain instead. But of course, my wife and I uh, watched it. My daughter will get a chance to watch it, but my wife was super excited about watching Hamilton. I was excited too. Uh, you know, I don't love musicals. I enjoy them. I, we saw the, the traveling production of Hamilton here in Los Angeles at Pantages Theater. Um, so I did enjoy it, and I enjoyed watching the, the Hamilton film on Disney Plus there. Uh, but the Muppets... Uh, not the actual Muppets, but somebody put together a fan thing with the Muppets, which was funny because I saw this beginning of this past week and I went, oh my God, they, they, they did Hamilton with the Muppets. Uh, well, my wife goes to turn it on last night and we realized, and it's not to take away from what the guy did, uh, we realized it's just the audio. So this, this guy is doing all of the Muppets voices, the entire first act of Hamilton, uh, which was pretty cool. Uh, but of course, I, I listened for a few minutes. I went, you know, we, I'm not going to sit on the couch on a Saturday night and, and just listen to this. This is something I can come back to later. Uh, I thought I was going to see actual puppets. I'm a very visual person. Like, I, I enjoy visualizing things. 
uh, which is partly why we do like the live feeds because I, other people are like that too. They like to see something while they're listening. Uh, and as much as I listen to music like crazy, uh, I tend to listen to music while I'm doing other things. Uh, it, you know, and, and it's it also just the way my my OCD mind works. It, it it's never it's nonstop. So it, I need constant like visual and audio stimulation. It's just a weird thing like that. So I'll get back to listening to it. But if you're interested, check that out. The little bit I listened to. Uh, was 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 definitely entertaining, especially if you're a Muppets fan. Uh, yeah, we're getting short on time. I'm gonna get through some of this though. Uh, the, <laughs> Palm Springs. This is a, a I'm not I'm not even positive if if it's a series or a movie. I believe it's a movie uh, that is on Hulu. It's a Hulu original movie. Uh, Andy Samberg. And apologies to this actress. I am blanking on her real name. Uh, but if you're familiar with the with the great show How I Met Your Mother, uh, she was she was the mother. This isn't even a spoiler if you're going back to because it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm not spoiling anything for you if you're planning on going watching the entire How I Met Your Mother series. Uh, she's the mother. And and apologies to that actress for for not knowing her name offhand. Uh, I know Andy Samberg because I watched him in a many many more things just because he's he, in just about everything. Andy Samberg. Uh, so I haven't seen this yet, but the, the trailers for it look really cool. Uh, I even said to my wife last night that we got to watch this. And then sure enough, I'm scrolling through one of the social platforms today. And a couple of my friends from film school uh, that I tend to, to take their film reviews very seriously uh, because I, I know their taste and, and their knowledge of films, uh, they actually had both said uh, fantastic film. might it's, it's the best thing that on streaming right now. So highly recommend Palm Springs. I haven't watched it yet. I'll give you an update on kind of my own thoughts. Uh, but based on knowledge that I get from other people that whose knowledge I know it, it is is better than my own, uh, Palm Springs would be something to to check out. Another thing on Hulu to check out is The Great. Uh, if you're not familiar with this, it's it's following Catherine the Great, uh, but it's also it has just the right amount of humor in it, uh, which, which I find that's what I actually find most entertaining about the show. Um, it, 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 it's it's a bit of a parody. In fact, they even say like a, a somewhat true story because they're they're obviously taking a lot of uh, you know liberties with the creativity of it and stuff. And and it's it's definitely one of those shows where you know they're they're trying to kind of go over the top with everything and the, the comedic value and the humor in it is really great. So if, if you're looking for something to watch uh, while you're stuck at home, that would be another one. I'm gonna save this. I want to talk about some of my. We're gonna talk about some of my favorite comic book like property type stuff uh, next week for the next episode. Uh, but I will bring this up. One more thing in entertainment. Uh, two more things, actually. Sports is still trying to get back. Uh, we, we have the NBA. Uh, most of the teams have arrived down there in Florida. I believe most of the NHL, that's hockey, uh, they are making their way toward to Canada right now to play in these these secure bubbles, bubble in, in quotations. Uh, and baseball is also getting ramped up to, to actually start play again. Uh, and I'm going to tell you, I don't think any of these leagues are going to finish finish their season. I, I don't see any way it's possibly happening. And uh, that was kind of confirmed a little bit this morning because the MLS, Major League Soccer here in the United States, uh, was supposed to resume play. They have been in a bubble, a completely quarantined uh, like thing area. I can't remember exactly where they're located, but they've all been in this bubble, quarantined together. Uh, and sure enough, there was supposed to be a match this Today, I don't know when, what time of day. I was going to say this morning, but I read it this morning. There's going to be a match today, and and a player uh, on one of the two teams that were going to play each other uh, tested positive for COVID. So they called off the game, called off the game completely. So I, I just don't see how, even with these bubble situations and everything, all the precautions they're taking, I don't see how these sports finish up this year. I, I just don't, uh, and I don't see how collegiate sports does anything in the fall. We're seeing a lot of that come out of there, and I, I genuinely I feel bad for the collegiate athletes, especially because. You only have so much eligibility, uh, and, and you're losing your time here to, to be a college athlete. You know, and I, I feel bad for the professional athletes that, that aren't millionaires and billionaires, uh, but definitely for the college athletes. I, I really do. All right, one more thing in entertainment. We're going to talk about this some more, uh, especially as bands get added. Punk in the Park, which is something I've talked about uh, recently, especially before the whole pandemic started. That was a, a festival that was supposed to happen uh, here in Orange County in April. It got pushed to August. It has now been pushed to next year, April of next year, essentially the same weekend uh, next year. And on top of that, Punk in the Park has actually extended it to two full days, 
of a festival instead of just one as it originally was. And it looks like we're having no effects headlining on day two of that. Uh, I already had my ticket for day one. I was still sitting on it knowing everything was being postponed. I'm still sitting on it. I'm going to be sitting on it. But now I got to go and turn that into a two-day ticket because I got to go see some no effects. Uh, Pennywise and Bouncing Souls are supposed to be headlining uh, Saturday. And I know Pennywise is confirmed, but we'll see if, if Bouncing Souls get confirmed as well. Bomb Pops playing that uh, that festival as well. So all kinds of great shows. If you're in Southern California, check out Pumpkin Park. We've, we've got close to a year uh, till we can actually go out there and enjoy the festival, uh, but but check it out because because that's that's coming up and and we're getting new artists and new bands and stuff added almost daily, um, and and just no effects in itself is is a pretty big add to uh, to Punk in the Park. Anytime you can get Fat Mike and No Effects out there, you know it's going to be a good time. It's just <laughs> you know it, it you can't have a bad time with No Effects. As terrible as your music is, wink wink. That's what no effects fans say. As terrible as their music is, it is a good time. Uh, so, so I will be out there at Punk in the Park. It's just going to be in about a year. Same with Hell Omega. Hell Omega got rescheduled next July. Like I got over a year until Hell Omega, and I've ha I've been sitting on those tickets since September. <laughs> I bought them in September for the love of God. Uh, all right, I think I'm done here. I'm I'm starting to fade. Real, I'm, we're working on the studio. Like I said to everyone on the live feed, that's going to get better. It, it, it's just I'm. Just, sorting through everything and things are a little all over the place right now uh, but at least I got my new damn headphones which is a huge huge thing on my part at least for me personally I just I, I love a good set of headphones and these so much better they're actually they're much more comfortable too they, they did some great work Pioneer did all right uh, like I said that's gonna do it uh, this has been Common Sense Sundays episode 9 with me your favorite podcast host the one and only Sean O'Rourke of Go Tell to the Wall uh, we will be back next week, same wall place, same wall time. Make sure you are following us on Facebook, facebook.com slash go tell to the wall. Uh, YouTube, head over there, search go tell to the wall, subscribe to our channel. Most importantly would be seanoworklive.com. Uh, if you bookmark that, that's going to keep you up to date on everything and have links to all those things I just mentioned. Uh, you can also follow my personal Instagram account. People have been following my Instagram, and I, I haven't even been posting stuff on Instagram, uh, but people have been following my, my Instagram account lately. I've been picking up followers for some reason, but follow me, uh, SoCalSean, if you're an Instagram user. You're going to see kid pictures and <laughs> like concert photos and stuff. All right, uh, I am going to go maybe have a drink and, and deal with some more of this studio stuff. Uh, we'll see you next week with episode 10. And until then, wall fans, common sensors, podcast consumers, social media world, remember, no matter what you do, no matter who you're with, no matter where you go, and no matter why you are doing it, always, always use common sense. <sighs> All right, everyone, thanks for joining. I don't know what is going on with this thing. I'm still having trouble with the live feed. It is going to get better as soon as I can upgrade some stuff in here, as soon as everyone stops buying every freaking webcam on the face of the earth. It's imp I'd like it's impossible. It's, it's, it, I was dead serious when I said, go to bestbuy.com right now, search webcams, sold out. It's sold out. And I'm not paying double price on Amazon because people are price, they're literally price gouging on there. It's what's funny is a trick with Best Buy uh, and I've done this so many times for I, like tablets and stuff. They price match Amazon, so you actually can just walk into Best Buy. I mean, you don't, don't walk in there now, for the love of God, wear a mask and stay home. But it could be you walk into Best Buy and you're like, oh, oh, here's the Amazon price. And it was always, you know, $100 cheaper, a little bit cheaper or whatever. And right now, like I said, Amazon, literally, Amazon is double the price for webcams that you see on Best Buy and you can't even buy them on Best Buy. Working on the studio. Working on the studio, it's gonna get better. Um, but thanks everyone for joining. Uh, like I said, we'll be back next week with the live feed, possibly looking a little better, and the sound's gonna be better too, which is, that's what I always say uh, when I tell people to subscribe, because you're getting the best audio experience off of here uh, as opposed to the, the video, but that the video is gonna improve once I can upgrade uh, stuff here in the studio. So, that being said, I'm done, I'm tired. Maybe I'll go have a drink before I finish editing some stuff here. Uh, we'll see you next week with episode 10 of Common Sense Sundays. I am, of course, the one and only Sean O'Rourke. And if you have any complaints at all, go tell them to a wall.